As the dawn breaks, we find ourselves standing on the threshold of another day, a day full of possibilities, challenges, and opportunities to grow closer to God. Today, I wanna to talk about something deeply personal, something that I believe we all struggle with at some point, the tension between holding on to the old and making room for the new. This morning, let's reflect on how God calls us to navigate this tension, to embrace the new things He's bringing into our lives, and to trust in His guidance, even when it feels uncomfortable. There's a certain comfort in the old, isn't there? It's like slipping into a favorite old sweater, worn, familiar, and comforting. I'm reminded of my collection of vinyl records at home. I've got about 80 records and a turntable, and there's something incredibly satisfying about getting up flipping that record over, and hearing the warm, scratchy sound that fills the room. In an age where every song ever made is available at our fingertips, I still find myself drawn to that old analog sound. It's not just about the music. It's about the memories, the emotions, the sense of something tangible and real. But as much as I love those old records, I realize that this attachment to the past can sometimes hold us back. We get so comfortable with the familiar that we become resistant to change, even when that change is necessary for our growth. The same thing can happen in our spiritual lives. We cling to old ways of thinking, old habits, and even old hurts because they're familiar. But God is always calling us forward, asking us to make room for the new. The early Christians faced this very challenge. Imagine being one of them having grown up in a system where your relationship with God was based on the law, on tangible actions like sacrifices and rituals. Suddenly, you're being asked to embrace a new covenant, one based not on what you do, but on what Christ has done. Hebrews 11, 1. NKJV tells us, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. This new way of relating to God wasn't just a minor adjustment. It was a complete paradigm shift. It required them to let go of the familiar and step into the unknown, to trust in something they couldn't see or touch. Let's dig a little deeper into what this paradigm shift really meant. Under the old covenant, everything was clear cut. If you sinned, you brought a sacrifice, a tangible, visible act that made things right with God. But now, with the coming of Christ, everything changed. No longer were they required to offer the blood of bulls and goats. Instead, they were asked to believe that the blood of Jesus was enough. This was a radical shift from works to grace, from the visible to the invisible. And isn't that the hardest part of faith? Trusting in what we can't see? We talk about faith as if it's easy, but the reality is that faith often requires us to let go of our own understanding, our own control. Proverbs chapter three, verse five to six tells us, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. This is easier said than done, especially when we're faced with situations that challenge our trust in God. Take Peter, for example. He was one of the pillars of the early church, yet even he struggled with this transition from law to grace. When God called him to go to the Gentiles, people he had been taught to avoid, Peter hesitated. It wasn't just about breaking tradition. It was about stepping into something completely new and uncomfortable. But God was doing a new thing, and Peter had to make a choice. Hold on to the old or make room for the new. This tension between the old and the new is something we all experience. Maybe you're holding on to old ways of thinking, ways that have served you well in the past, but are now holding you back. Or maybe you're clinging to past hurts, unable to move forward because you're so focused on what happened before. Whatever it is, God is calling you to make room for the new. Let's talk about this tension for a moment. It's not comfortable, is it? We don't like tension. We want things to be clear, straightforward, and easy. But the reality is that growth happens in the tension. Just like a muscle needs resistance to grow, our faith needs tension to develop. 
I think about the early church navigating the tension between grace and works, between Jew and Gentile, between the old covenant and the new. It wasn't easy. They had to figure out how to hold on to the truth of God's word while also being open to the new ways God was working. This tension wasn't just a challenge. It was an opportunity for growth. James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4, NIV, reminds us, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. God uses tension to refine us, to stretch us beyond what we think is possible, and to prepare us for the new things He wants to do in our lives. Let me share a personal story. As a father, I constantly feel the tension between wanting to protect my children and knowing I need to let them grow. I remember when my daughter was young, I wanted to shield her from everything. I knew what the world was like. I'd been there. But I also knew that she needed to experience life to make her own mistakes and to learn how to navigate the world on her own. That tension between holding on and letting go was one of the hardest things I've ever experienced. But it was also one of the most important because it taught me to trust God with my children, to believe that He was guiding them even when I couldn't. This same tension applies to our spiritual lives. We want to trust God, but we also want to control the outcome. We say we have faith, but then we hold on to our own plans, our own understanding. The early Christians had to learn to live in this tension to trust that God's grace was enough, even when it didn't make sense. And so do we. The early church had to embrace something completely new when God started moving among the Gentiles. These were people they had been taught to avoid, and yet God was calling them to welcome them with open arms. Isaiah 43:19 NIV says, See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. God is always at work, doing something new, but are we willing to make room for it? Sometimes, the new thing God brings doesn't look like what we expected. It might even feel like a threat to what we know, but God's plans are always for our good. I've prayed in the past for God to remove my problems, but what I've learned is that He often uses those very problems to bring about His greatest blessings. It's in the struggle, in the tension, that God reveals His power and His grace. There's a passage in Leviticus 26.10 NIV that says, You will still be eating last year's harvest when you will have to move it out to make room for the new. This verse speaks to the abundance of God's provision, but it also highlights the need to let go of the old to make space for the new. Imagine being so blessed that you have to clear out the old just to make room for what's next. But here's the challenge. We can't receive the new if we're still holding on to the old. This is where faith comes in. It's not just about believing that God can do something new. It's about being willing to let go of what we know to make room for it. It's about trusting that God's new thing is better, even when it doesn't look like what we expected. So, what does this mean for us today? It means we need to be willing to let go of the old, our old ways of thinking, our old habits, our old fears to make room for the new. We need to trust that God is leading us, even when we can't see where we're going. It's not easy, but it's necessary. Let's not be like those who resisted the new move of God because it didn't fit their expectations. Instead, let's embrace the new with open hearts, trusting that God is with us every step of the way. After all, He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If He's bringing something new into your life, it's because He has something better for you. And remember, the tension you're feeling isn't a sign that you're doing something wrong. It's a sign that you're growing. Just like a muscle needs tension to grow, your faith needs these moments of struggle and uncertainty to develop. So don't shy away from the tension. Lean into it. Embrace it. Trust that God is using it to prepare you for something greater. Now, for all those listening, let's take a moment to pray. This is not just a ritual. It's an opportunity to connect with the God who positions us, who opens and closes doors, 
and who guides our every step. Let's bow our heads and offer our hearts in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you today with hearts full of gratitude for your faithfulness. Thank you for being the God who sees us, who knows us, and who loves us beyond measure. Lord, we acknowledge that we often hold on to the old, our comfort zones, our past successes, and even our past failures, because they feel safe and familiar. But today, we ask for the courage to release those things into your hands. Father, we recognize that you are doing a new thing in our lives. Help us to perceive it, to embrace it, and to walk boldly into the future you have prepared for us. Lord, we know that growth comes through tension, and we ask for the strength to endure the challenges that come our way. May we see these challenges not as obstacles, but as opportunities to grow in faith, to deepen our relationship with you, and to become more like Christ. We also pray for wisdom, Lord, in balancing the tension between faith and action. Teach us to trust you fully while also taking the steps you've called us to take. Help us to discern when to move forward and when to wait on your timing. We surrender our plans, our desires, and our fears to you, knowing that your plans are higher and better than anything we could imagine. Lord, for those of us who are struggling to let go of the past, we ask for your healing touch. Break the chains of regret, guilt, and shame that keep us bound. Replace them with your peace, your grace, and your love. Help us to forgive ourselves and others so that we can move forward in freedom. Father, we pray for the new things you are bringing into our lives, new opportunities, new relationships, new challenges, and new blessings. Give us the grace to welcome them with open hearts and open minds. May we not be threatened by the unknown, but instead trust that you are with us every step of the way. As we go through this day, Lord, remind us of your presence. Help us to keep our eyes fixed on you, the author and finisher of our faith. Strengthen us in the areas where we are weak and give us the perseverance to press on, knowing that you are working all things together for our good. We love you, Lord, and we trust you with our lives. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me this morning. Remember, God is always doing something new in our lives and we need to make room for it. If this message resonated with you, I encourage you to type Amen in the comments. Share this video with someone who needs encouragement and subscribe for more uplifting content. Let's continue to grow together in faith and trust in the God who makes all things new.